We're here with Rabbi Emma Kipley-Ogman, who's going to help us learn what to expect in a synagogue. Welcome to KI. Thanks. So we're standing here in the lobby, um, and we're going to take a look at some of the things that you'll see in the lobby before you actually walk into the sanctuary of the synagogue. Great. So there's often a basket of kippahs, of kippot, outside a sanctuary, because it's custom in Judaism for people before they go into the sanctuary, before they go in to pray, to cover their head. It's a sign of respect. Outside the sanctuary, you'll also often find all sorts of information on programs that the synagogue has to offer, on information about what's going on every week. There's a whole brochure rack over there. Um, and this one is really helpful too, which we'll see inside. There's page numbers to help you follow along during the Shabbat morning service. Also outside the sanctuary on your way in, you'll often find a rack of prayer shawls called talisim talitot. Um, they're usually of various sizes and shapes. Here's a narrower one. Here's a wider one. Um, and it's, it's customary if you're coming into a shul, if you're coming to a synagogue for a Shabbat morning service, um, Jewish people will often, Jewish adults will often wear, wear a talis, wear, wear a prayer shawl. And before you put it on, you say a blessing. The blessing goes like this. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kidashanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu lihitatef bat tzitzit. The blessing means, blessed are you, God, sovereign of the universe, who has sanctified us with the commandments and commanded us to wrap ourselves in tzitzit. Tzitzit are the fringes that you can see on the corners of the garment. They're knotted in a very special way that actually indicates the oneness of God, all written into this garment that you, you're welcome, invited to put on as you go into a sanctuary on a Shabbat morning. So now we're going into the sanctuary where we're going to discover all sorts of architectural features and different components to the sanctuary. At Killeth Israel, in our sanctuary, we have a number of plaques um, put up in memoriam of members of our community who have died in years past from from the beginning of from the beginning of the synagogue. Um, so you can you can feel actually surrounded by the presence of uh, many generations, even as we sit in the sanctuary today. And then we get to more of the practical stuff. We have pews. Some synagogues have chairs. We have the bima, which is the stage up front. We have the ark in the middle, where the Torah is. And we have above it a little light called the ner tamid, the eternal light that's always on. So, let's find a seat. Some people like to sit farther away, some people like to sit closer up. We're going to try sitting close in today and see what it feels like. Um, so as you sit down in the pew, you might notice, if you look down and around, that there are books um, all in, tucked in in different ways. And, um, and some of those books are sidurim, are prayer books. And some of those books are humashim, that, uh, books, books with the five books of the Torah in it to follow along with the weekly reading that will be read in the middle of the service. So let's take a look in a sidur and just open it and see what it looks like. Um, so the, you can see in the Siddur that there are prayers in Hebrew and in English. There's a translation of everything as you go along. Um, and often the person leading the prayers or the rabbi will be calling out as they go what page we're on. So they'll say page 40, you turn to page 40 and, and you can follow along. Or you can follow along yourself with a guide that lets you know, okay, if we're saying this prayer, here's the page that we're on in the prayer book. And many different synagogues have different kinds of ways of helping you follow along with the service. When we come to the Torah reading, which happens at the middle of the service, uh, you'll put away your sidur, actually, and open up a chumash, open up a, the, the book that has all of the Torah reading in it, and you'll turn to the weekly reading. So this week's reading is, is Truma, as it happens. Um, it and each, each week we read a different part of the Torah, starting with Genesis and finishing in Deuteronomy, so that each year we read through the entire cycle. Um, so you'll see that the, 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 the portion for the week is, is in Hebrew and in English with a lot of commentary below that you can read as you, as you follow along with the reading. In some communities, the prayer leader faces the congregation by usually being up at the front on the bima. And in other communities, the leader faces in the same direction as the congregation 
as Rabbi Emma is demonstrating so for us right now. So here at the person who's leading the service will stand here, facing forward along with the rest of the, along with the, rest of the community. And I'll show you what it looks like in some other communities where somebody might stand facing the church. It might look more like this. During services, we both stand and sit, depending what prayer is being said. When the ark is opened, we all stand up as a sign of respect. So let's go take a look at what this arc is all about. So Rabbi Emma has just opened the arc, and as you can see, there are Torahs inside. So let's actually take out a Sefer Torah, a Torah scroll, and we'll take a look inside to see what it looks like. Great. We carry it almost like a baby. So you'll see on the on the Sefer Torah, you can go around the top. On the Sefer Torah is what's called a yad. This is a yad you can see. It means in Hebrew hand, and you can see that it's actually shaped like a hand. This is the pointer that's used during the reading for the person who's reading from the Torah to be able to follow along with the words. And the Torah is dressed with a cover. Do you want a hand? Uh, yeah. The Torah is dressed with a cover. And then on the inside, the, the scroll is held closed with a label. And we can take a look inside. So the Torah scroll is, um, is made of parchment, written with ink. And you can see the words of the words of this week's reading here, written very carefully in a specific calligraphy that's used only only for holy writings. So thank you for showing us the sanctuary and what to expect here in a synagogue, Rabbi Emma. It was really a pleasure, and I hope I'll see everybody here someday. Thanks.